that really nice introduction. Um, so my name's Grace, and I'm a freelance illustrator. I grew up in Brighton, but eventually moved to London to study illustration at Camberwell, and never really left. Um, I thought I'd introduce my work and then talk about a few personal projects that have been important to me. So in case you hadn't seen it, um, my work is painty and colorful and sometimes quite detailed and textured. Um, everything I do is with oil paints on paper. People always think it's gouache, but it's not. Um, <laughs> my commission work is mostly for magazines and newspapers, online stuff, and um, like cookbooks. Yeah, a lot of stuff for cookbooks. And this is from a recent book I did about Van Gogh. Um, so for commissions, I usually, I'll draw up a rough on an iPad, like the image at the top, and just figure out colors and composition and indicate as much as I can like what the final thing will look like for the client and myself, and then I can just paint and kind of go off on tangents a bit then. But then for personal work, I often just draw out an image or the composition and then just color it in <laughs> with paint um, and try not to use the computer as much, just to see where it goes. And that's, this is a process of something. And then the finished. And sometimes I animate stuff too, but kind of in a wonky, self-taught way. Like, I don't really know how to do it. <laughs> so, ooh, I forgot I did all those transitions. <laughs> um, I only really started painting in my last year at uni. My family kept giving me oil paints for Christmas and I didn't really have any money, so that's why I started using them. Um, it seemed like a good fit, though, for the sort of imagery I wanted to make. Um, paints took away a bit of control over the image because I can be a bit of a perfectionist sometimes, so it's like if you make a mistake, you just kind of have to go with it. And sometimes the mistakes are better than what you planned anyway. Um, my tutor at the time actually told me to stop painting, that I wasn't really working. Um, maybe you agree with her. <laughs> um, but at, I think I just had a feeling like I wasn't there at that time, but I, if I kept like practicing at it, then maybe eventually like the images in my head will match up to what I'm painting. And after graduating, I really needed time to just figure that out and it felt urgent to go out and like promote my work and tell people about it and get jobs but I needed to just get to grips with painting and make really bad work and just get better and luckily I had um, lots of friends in my course who are kind of like-minded and ten of us got a studio together in Peckham and we ended up forming a collective called Day Job and having that group of people kind of saved me and helped me keep the momentum going after graduating. Everyone was in the same boat and we could kind of help each other. Um, this is our group photo we took to promote ourselves at the time. Um, I don't really know why we did it like that. Um, I think we just wanted to make ourselves laugh. Um, we worked on lots of different things like publications and workshops and installations that picked me up at Somerset House and the VNA and Peckham Space. But my favorite project was one that we didn't actually finish. We were all a bit knackered from interning and working actual day jobs and never having days off. So we decided to look up a list of cheap places to fly to on Skyscanner and put them all in a hat. Like, we did actually put them into a hat, 
and each pick a place to go to. Um, we had to go alone, and you can't have been there before, and then you had to come back and make work about it. And we all had a group message about it, so we could share when we were there on the trip, like what we were up to. Um, we didn't end up putting the work together, but I decided when I... Oh, yeah, I got Oslo. <laughs> Um, I decided when I came back that I wanted to catch all these little moments into a comic, so I just made it anyway. Um, these are some of the spreads from it. And my trip was really quiet because Oslo is really small and really quiet, and it was March and freezing, so I didn't need any words in it really. Um, it was fun to just wander around and experience this place and travel alone, which is something I hadn't really done before. And just like soaking everything up like this big sponge. And then that was sort of the calm before the storm. Um, a few months after that trip, lots of stuff happened at once, like personally, that also it sort of changed how I thought about everything. I got a big animation commission and decided to quit my job to go proper freelance and also started going on lots of Tinder dates. And then just as that was all happening, my granddad died quite suddenly. So after things had settled down a bit, I started making a comic about that summer to kind of process everything, and it's called Small Hours after a poem my dad wrote at the time. Um, it was really stressful, and reflecting on it since, and through making the comic, it's kind of made me see how much pressure I was putting on myself to work all the time, even though I wasn't really feeling great. I was just like using work as an excuse to distract myself from everything, which sometimes was good, but it didn't. It wasn't healthy, and it's important to be as a person as well as an illustrator. It sounds stupid, but it's something I still have to make an effort. I still have to make an effort to remember that. Um, so this is the first page, me telling people maybe I'll make a comic. I don't know if you can read it. It says, so what have you been up to lately? staring out the window mostly between levels of Candy Crush. That was bigger at the time when I started this comic. Um, <laughs> well, I was thinking I might, sort of, might write a sort of comic about last summer. A lot happened at once. It's mainly going to be about death and dating and drawing. What do you think? Oh, my God, you have to put me in it. I've got tons of stories you can use. I better, I better start being even more funny. Can you put me in it? I could be a black superwoman or even a mutant. I don't mind. Good idea. It could be therapeutic for you. Wow, exciting. I can't wait. That'll be so cool. It'll be like everything, but from your perspective. Just try not to offend the family too much. Um. Right, cool. Will our dates be in it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, these are some spreads. At that time, I was so uncertain about myself and my work, and I actually had to give a short talk at somewhere at that point, and I felt so unworthy to be there because I didn't feel like a proper illustrator yet, and I couldn't understand why anyone would want to listen to me talk. Um, <laughs> then also in the back of my mind was the thought, like, your granddad's dying, none of this matters. So I don't think I gave a very uplifting talk. Hopefully this one's better. <laughs> It's quite scary, like, putting something so personal out there, but doing it has led to so many conversations with people who have gone through similar experiences, and not just grief, but, like, just working and graduating and freelancing and bad dates 
and everything like that, it's felt really worth it to open up. And I've been working on it off and on for a few years in self-publishing parts, and now I'm going to crowdfund with Unbound to make a book. So I've made a little video just to persuade you to look that up and pre-order a copy. thinking, yes, I must buy it. Um, so fast forward a bit from that. And um, I stopped working at home and started working in a shared space with lovely people. And this is a picture of my corner there that I share with artist Charlotte May, who's in day job as well. Um, then at the beginning of last year, I was having another crisis, because it always starts with a crisis. And, um, I needed to get away for a bit, so I decided to go to Japan because I'd been there before and have some friends there and decided I'd go for about six weeks and travel around a bit with Charlotte and various other people too. I was a bit scared of uh, booking it at the time, a bit like, what am I doing? But in hindsight, it was probably the best thing I could have done, both personally and professionally, because... I don't usually keep sketchbooks, but when I went, I decided to try and record everything in a sort of scrapbook. I wanted to capture it a bit more interestingly than taking loads of photos on my phone, which I also did. But it stopped me feeling guilty for being away and kind of look at stuff in a different way. Here's some pages from it. It was a nice chance to have a break from commissions because sometimes like from working for other people I don't feel particularly free and I forget to just have fun. So it was good to just experiment and liberating to like, make work for myself with no real purpose. Just explore how to like, record what we're seeing and feeling in these places. Here's some pics. Um, it's challenging to try and oil paint in all these places. Um, sometimes I've run out of white spirit, which I use to thin the paints, and I'd have to ask like confused hostile people if I could borrow some just like cooking oil, which turns out turns all your paintings yellow very quickly. But um, yeah, they're really greasy now. But um, <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe don't do that. But the whole way of working, it changed how I painted because I had to be more flexible and it kind of gave me more confidence in myself from having to work quickly and be more adaptable and be a bit less like tentative with marks and bolder with mark making and colours. Um, and then when I came back, I carried on working from photos and just painting some of the memories I, I felt compelled to record. So I'm not really into super realistic paintings, and sometimes I worry my style can get like quite easily slide into that. So a lot of that effort of making stuff is sometimes in the withholding of details. 
and trying to stop myself before it gets too exact. I try to be guided more by the atmosphere or the feeling. And then doing all that personal work led to briefs that were more directly linked to my interests and that way of painting. Like these big prints I did for Magma, it's in my sketches. And some details there. These are a lot more detailed because they're a lot bigger as well, but I was still trying to like hold back a bit. And some of the details I didn't even see when I was there or when I just glanced at the photo, but then kind of blowing up those images, I noticed like this weird little drummer man and other signs and colors and shapes. And some illustrations for a book about forest bathing. And it also led to getting some work from Japanese clients and being represented by a Japanese agent. So here's some advertising work. This advert is, is a series of adverts between uh, showcasing the products that this company makes. And each one is a conversation between the company and the product. So this is a conversation between the company, Chico, and the rocket. But um, I'm not going to attempt to translate it now. Just no, it's really cute. Um, and then this year also led to meeting some galleries. Like, well, last year we met galleries, and then that led to this year having shows there and also having a show in Hong Kong. So these are some dogs I met in Hong Kong. Um, that's Mimi on the left and Dim Sum on the right. And also we had an exhibition back in Japan called Hot Air that I put on with Charlotte and Charlene Mann in Tokyo and then Osaka. I did um, some new paintings and weavings and other bits and bobs. And I also got to show the paintings that I'd done the year before and kind of bring them back to where it had all began. And it felt really good, like they'd gone full circle and just to talk about them with people who had their own experience of the experiences of those places or who had traveled there or grown up there. And it was super rewarding. Uh, and that's it. So thank you.